Hi, Russ of Aquarimax here. In part one of the isopod care guide, I'll be discussing isopod enclosures. I'll talk about four different types and what I like about each type. The first type I'd like to talk about is the Sterilite tub. I'll put a link in the description to these, but I do recommend that you try to find these locally because they're likely to be cheaper at a dollar store or a department store or something like that. There are several reasons why these enclosures are one of the most popular isopod enclosures out there. One is that they come in different sizes. These are just two of the sizes that are available. So it's easy to find a size that fits the size of your colony and of the species that you're working with. Another is that they use space very efficiently because they are stackable. And another is that they are very customizable in terms of ventilation. Now, this container, if you don't drill any holes in it at all, is not airtight. And so isopods with fairly modest ventilation requirements can do just fine in an unmodified container. For example, I keep my dwarf whites in six quart sterilite tubs without drilling any holes in it at all, and they do just fine. There are isopods that need more ventilation. For those, it's easy to customize these containers. You can drill holes, you can cut larger holes in the top and cover them with fine fabric, and you can drill holes along the sides. With a good drill and the correct drill bit, it's really not a problem, they're pretty easy to do. As you notice here, I've drilled holes just along the edges of the lid and along the sides, and this allows me to stack the containers without compromising that ventilation at all. And these containers are just the right depth so that you can include a base layer of substrate, a layer of leaf litter, and a layer of hides without any problem. So in a nutshell, these containers are great because they're inexpensive, widely available, very customizable, and come in the correct size for just about any colony of isopod. In some situations, you may find that you want a small temporary enclosure for isopods. One that I've used with success is this product from Superior Shipping Supplies, and I'll put a link in the description to this as well. One thing that I like about this enclosure is that it's pre-ventilated. It has very fine ventilation holes along two edges, so it's suitable for small to medium-sized isopods, as long as the colony is quite small. Um, you wouldn't want to put large uh, Porcelio species in here, for example, but I have had success with both Armadillidium vulgari puntacana, when I had a very small colony. I actually purchased it in uh, an enclosure like this and kept them in there for some time until they got larger and started breeding, and then I moved them on to a six quart where they are now thriving. So this worked well for the three or four months that I had them in there. I also did a similar thing with my rubber duckies. I had some problems with some of my rubber duckies dying off, and I had a very small population of them, so I put them in a container like this, and pretty soon they were breeding. And now I have a larger number of them and have moved them on to a larger enclosure. So while I do not recommend this for larger isopod species ever, and I would only recommend it for smaller isopod species temporarily, it makes a great enclosure when uh, you want something small for a small group of isopods or very small individuals. So in just a moment, I'm going to show you two of my absolute favorite enclosure types that I've ever used for isopods. But before I do that, I want to thank you for watching the video and thank you for your support, whether it's using the affiliate links, purchasing things at the Aquarimax store, or helping me out on Patreon. You know, my supporters at Patreon do something that really helps me do more of what I love, which is sharing what I have learned and what I continue to learn with all of you. So for as little as a dollar a month, they support Aquarimax. If you'd like to know more about that, I'll put a link at the end of this video. So the two enclosures we just looked at are very economical options, and now we're going to look at some of the more deluxe, higher-end enclosures. This enclosure was sent to me by isoviva.com. I'll put a link in the description to the website. And I really, really like this enclosure for several reasons. One is pretty obvious. You can see into it very clearly. It gives a really nice look to it. It's very customizable in terms of ventilation. You can purchase uh, enclosures that have just the ventilation screens here on the top. Uh, you can get both sides. You can just get one side. So you have a lot of options there and then have these supplementary uh, cross ventilation holes drilled in as well, which is really nice. 
And in this particular enclosure right now, I have some Porcelia ornatus high yellow. And I can just look in and see them crawling around, which is really nice. And you can also get a good idea of how uh, moist your sphagnum moss is in your hydration station, all that kind of thing. So really, really nice enclosure. Thanks again to isoviva.com for sending me these, and I hope to get more of these in the future. The final enclosure type I want to show you is not made specifically for isopods. It's made for another type of invertebrate altogether. This is a tarantula cribs enclosure. I'll put a link to tarantula cribs down in the description. So even though this enclosure is made specifically for tarantulas, it turns out to be a great fit for a lot of different isopods. Once again, an enclosure with this type of clarity is a good way to showcase some day active isopods. So I have some Porcelio Levis milk back in here. Porcelio Levis dairy cow would be another good choice, as would the other day active species that I mentioned. I really, really like how you can view the isopods not only on the surface of the substrate, but along the edges where they're from the top, they'd be covered with leaf litter, but you can see them on the sides. The ventilation in this enclosure is excellent. It's got side ventilation and top ventilation. So I think uh, it's probably sufficient for just about any type of isopod in terms of how well it is ventilated. The lid is very secure. It has magnetic closures and just kind of snap shut like that. I've really enjoyed keeping isopods of various types in these tarantula cribs enclosures so far. I've got rubber duckies in a small one. I have Porcelio indides prunosis oreo crumble in a medium sized one. And like I said, in this larger one, I have Porcelio levis milk back. Very fun enclosures. And I gotta say, I'm probably going to be getting more of them. So there are four of my favorite isopod enclosures. Do you have a specific isopod enclosure that's your favorite and why? Please let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching today. I post videos every Tuesday and Friday, all on aquarium and vivarium pets. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then click the bell icon so you don't miss my next video. And I am happy to announce that in my Isoviva enclosure, the first batch of Monkai has been released by my Porcelio Ornatus High Yellow.